Ding, ding, ding. Do you know how hard it was to get this thing up? I'm like, good golly, we Miss like Molly. Technology was not working today for us. Yeah, I guess tech, yeah, technology was not working with for us. With I us. I see about a refrigerator already. Uh, I think it did. Then why is technology still up? Well, you know what? Because it goes into Mercury goes into retrograde like every five minutes. Every yeah, I think it's like three or four times a year. It feels like four or five times a year, oh, yeah. but I know I want to say at least three times a year. Oh yeah, at least. So I'm like, you can always like once or twice. When can I have no uh, Mercury retrograde issues that would make me the happiest <laughs> or no in the too. whole world? But, yeah, that doesn't always happen. So, today is Friday, and we are getting ready for an open house that tomorrow. is tomorrow from 11 to 4. I know I'm doing um, foot detoxes for 25 bucks. You do need to talk to me or text me so I can make sure that I have enough water and I have a chair open for you. So, my number is 405-549-3766, just to clarify. And then, Matt, what do you got going on for the open house tomorrow? $10 off every 50 and then if you spend 100 you get an entry for a free Reiki session with you. Ooh, oh, I like that. <laughs> so he's got a slew of crystals, and he's got some that he's going to talk about today. Um, I'm doing ionic foot detoxes, because that way I can... Um, usually all my other sessions are one-on-one, -on -one, and so I really didn't want to be tied up in the room during open house, but I am offering the foot detoxes, and I think those are a phenomenal thing for everybody. Get detoxed. I know y'all have been uh, eating and Way drinking, much over and the holidays. et cetera, you know, from Thanksgiving on, and some of you are like a little bit more than normal, so you need to come in and detox. Keep your body clean and pristine. Keep the temple in order. Keep the temple in order. I love that. <laughs> So, but one of the things that Matt wanted to talk today uh, about was some of his favorite crystals. And I only have like a couple over there and he's got a lot more. So I'm going to ask Matt, tell me, what, what, first of all, what turned you on to crystals? What was your very first experience with a stone? I had this quartz and every time I would sleep with it, I would have like the most vivid dreams. And then it cracked me and then I was happy. So you had vivid dreams with a quartz crystal. Oh yeah, it was it was like, like you you know the dreams where you're not dreaming, you're like literally walking in the dream, and you're like that was like I was living like on the TV show. It was like, it was, I was like okay, this is different. Oh, very cool. And then what was the second stone? Oh my second, I think my moldavites. I, my moldavite has always been like anytime I have a moldavite, it's like I'm just. I have one Moldavite, and um, when I use that Moldavite, I'm okay for a couple of days. And then my husband will tell me, you are incredibly mean. <laughs> and I'm like, mean? And he's like, yeah, you're just like really, really mean. What's going on? And uh, I'll end up putting that Moldavite up, and like 30 minutes later, he's like, thank God you got rid of that meanness. And I'm like, damn, was the Moldavite makes me mean? It's the outer space stuff. It's the outer space stuff. I'd probably be an angry alien, right? <laughs> You'd be the one with the little product. I, I would be the one to make the movie about, you know, alien versus predator or something like that. Well, I'm the alien, damn it, you know. Um, you know, I, I and, and there's a lot of people that really connect in with the outer space thing. And I'm like, hmm. And the funny thing is, is that I've seen several UFOs growing up. And it's not that I don't believe in them. I don't. I'm over here hoping. I hope they can, can't live on oxygen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if they're evil, they can't live on oxygen. But you know, so for me, it was like, yes, I've seen the spacecraft. I've seen the craft. I've seen their vehicles. I've seen their vehicles in the sky. But I have yet to see one, an alien in flesh. But you know what? It seems to be the end thing now. It's like everybody's in alien, just like it's in to be spiritual, too. It's like it's the oh, end yeah. thing now. Well, the same thing, you know. We could say the same thing about Bigfoot slash Sasquatch. Sasquatch. You know, I believe that they exist. You know, I was like, didn't you all watch Here Comes the Brides? You know, there was a brother that was a little funky looking, you know. 
So, um, you know, I, I, I look at it and I'm like, I there's a lot of things that people would call a conspiracy theory that I totally believe in, you know, because it's either I've seen or experienced personally, not so much that I hear somebody else's account and I'm like, oh, that's a gospel truth. It's like, oh, well, I've seen UFOs I've in the sky, myself, yeah. you know, and my dad worked for the government. Now, he was a civil servant. Hmm. Um, but he had a lot of government. But he had a lot of government contracts, and some of them he had a degree of, you know, classified, classi classified whatever it's mm -hmm. called. <clears throat> and I remember as a kid, we would ask him, and he would look and he'd, oh, and go, I cannot confirm nor deny <laughs> that, you know, whatever you were asking about. And you're like, hmm. So I learned that whenever they're using, I cannot confirm or deny. There's something more to it. There's something more to it. There's a clause in there, or it's a straight up, oh yeah, oh yeah. We don't talk about it. We don't talk. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about aliens, UFOs, you know, <laughs> Bigfoot, you know, Lost child trafficking gangs, you know, or whatever. Yeah, but you start looking at, you know, at, at things, and then. I, what I really love about crystals is people will go, that's witchcraft. That's just bullshit. Oh, there's nothing about crystals and stones. And I'm like, do you know how much of your medication originated from a mineral that created a stone? Do you know that your, I don't have a quartz out here, but like your yeah, electronics, okay, here's the quartz, not the kind of quartz I was looking at here. Okay, it's too, I'm too lazy to reach back. Um, but you know, like your quartz powers, your computer, your, what, your computer, your telephone, your um, wristwatch, all mm -hmm. of these different things. And I was like, and you guys get married, and you have a diamond in your wedding ring. Sapphire. Or Sapphires, whatever. Amethyst. Oh, you know what the diamond means? And I'm like, well, what does the diamond mean? <laughs> because y'all tripping about my sunstone. But you're wearing your diamond, and you're telling me what your diamond means. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the same thing as, like, what does the sunstone mean? Or this black tourmaline or whatever. Right. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. So it was like crystals have been around since the dawn of time. Yeah. Moses and his brother Aaron and many of the uh, high priests wore a, a breastplate that had 12 stones on it. And each one of those stones is in scripture, folks. And it'll tell you what, if you, you know, really read through scripture, you'll see there's tons of oils, tons of herbs. <laughs> And tons of crystals and stones. So don't tell me it's new age because it's not new age. It's old age. Because they've been doing it since the dawn of time. Oh, well, it's pagan. Well, honey, we were all pagan at one time. You know, really, seriously, we were all pagan. Our family originated out of pagan roots. Mm -hmm. And paganism was still um, a contender for Christianity as in the people... Up until like the 8th, 7th, and 8th century. Well, that's why Christmas moved to December instead of April. And I'm kind of like, okay. But, you know, technically Jesus was born in April, not in December. Yeah, because historically saying. taxes are always in the spring. Mm hmm Oh, yeah. That's because they want to make sure they got money for uh, <laughs> summer vacation, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, All the you're elected. Your, whatever those guys are called, your magistrates are like, yes, we need to have vacation money. You know, and the wife is going, and the kids stop private school in September. We have to pay that by May. <laughs> so You got to get the tuition in. Got to get the tuition in. So, you know, there's Never the tutors. magistrate's wife is like beating the... <laughs> magistrate, Make go sure get the money. you get them taxes in. You know, so I always think things like that are so fascinating that, you know, we're so quick to judge on things when... There's a lot of really cool groovy things that do go on. I was like, oh, I was hoping my blue kai and I was here, but it's not. And I'm not getting up to go look for it, so I've, <laughs> I've got enough. But so, um, what was? What's your favorite stone? He's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the same, and those are the same, right? The, yes. Okay. 
So, uh, all right. So, what is it about those stones, or that attracted you, or why? Why do you? Why do you? Why? Do you, why is that your trade now? I love like well like this one like these these two especially because this is Marlonite and this is Mystic Marlonite or this one's called Dendritic Gopal and then mm -hmm. Indigo Gabriel. These stones have caused great and you feel they're stones of change. So when you use them, stones of change, okay. you feel a lot of change in them, especially on the metaphysical. Like you, your dreams will start to occur around them. And then like with like with Citrine itself, you know I'm just a big old mm -hmm. old sucker for Citrine. Because it like it draws wealth and draws positivity to you. Because it's one of the quartz family, so you know it's it all. And like remember the talk we had yesterday: quartz, the quartz, the quartz. It's still, it's part of that family. Mm -hmm. Just like you know a rose quartz. It's a rose quartz, but it's still in that. It's still family. a quartz. Right, it's still yeah. in that family. And yes, and I do believe a quartz is a quartz is a quartz. And I believe that if I didn't have a sunstone in, and I had the citrine, which I know is a quartz, it's you know. I might say today the citrine is a sunstone and use it as a sunstone or, you know, as I would in, well, in a, in a healing. It's, you, you put your intention into it and if, you know, it, it radiates with you. I mean, we can't really change the vibration too much on a stone, but that's always about, it's not about too much on the, it's that intention, that intention that goes into it. But the stone is still at heart itself. It's just... It's vibrating what needs to vibrate for that moment. For that moment, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so your citrine. Um, is this a smoky citrine? No, this is regular. It's a regular one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it looks kind of like it's it got some gray, look... so I was wondering if it was some smoky citrine. It almost does look like it's got some kind of, You know, it's kind of like you're like, I don't see the yellow. And I'm <laughs> like, um... To me, it's got more of a smoke color, but I do see, see the that? yellow, and I do see the little rainbows in there, too. You know, like, with the really yellow ones, some of those aren't even, like... They are citrine, because citrine and amethyst have that same quality to them. But a lot of people don't know, like, a lot of that citrine you buy in your local store, it's just amethyst that's been heat treated. Because that's what gives it the yellow, too. Like, mm -hmm. And then that, you know, that white you see on the bottom of it is from the burn. Because as you're heat treating the amethyst, it gets that burn on the bottom... But it still has the same traits to it. That's oh. why they... Okay. All right. So I have a question. Yes. Because, you know, like on amethyst crystals... Is there an amethyst handy? Oh, wow. I know there's one over in here, I believe. Just bring the whole... Thing. The whole lot. <laughs> the whole lot, yeah. I'll look oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a quartz, too. <laughs> okay. So this is the, what I would, you know, what I would refer to as a quartz quartz. Through there. Okay, so I know I have an amethyst. Okay, here's an amethyst. Okay, and it's really little, but here, here's my little amethyst. Here's an amethyst. I use this particular one in a crystal healing. But when you're looking at an amethyst, okay, you're not supposed to put an amethyst in a window mm. because it'll fade, it. it'll fade it. And you're not Listen, supposed to, uh, you know, and they'll say, oh, don't put a. Um, don't put your amethyst like in the girls. And I'm going to put your amethyst in the girls. Um, if you need to put it in the girls for calming, put it in the girls for calming. Just do it. Uh, but if you have a lot of body heat, it'll take the purple out. So my question, I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to do an experiment on this. We should get an amethyst, stick it in the window where it's getting direct sunlight mm -hmm. for like 90 days. Let's see what happens to it. see what happens to it. Does it turn into a citrine? <laughs> you know, that would be so cool. I'm like, no. Because, you know, you're thinking about the sunlight coming down on it. And, you know, and that, I don't know, if you were doing it outside, it might be radiant heat as well. With the, but you'd have to do that in the summertime. Because there's not enough heat in Oklahoma. In, the, in Oklahoma. Although that's winter. 70 degrees two days ago, I was like, where did this come from? Oh, yeah, but it's going to be like a high of 30 next week. <laughs> Make your mind. God. Mother Nature here in Oklahoma, please take your menopausal medication. Pick a, pick a, pick a direction. Where are we going? With? Gee whiz. I'm like, she's hideous. Okay, so what's the next one, bro? Well, we've got the snowflake um, fluorite. Okay, so um, show them. Take it up there. Oh. I'm going to show them without. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, we got a glare on that, so it's going to be hard to see the snowflake. Ah, right there. So 
if you kind of like follow my finger, whoops, I guess I'm not following, like right here where my finger kind of sort of was, there's your snowflake. So what makes it, how does that happen? That one I'm not sure on. I haven't done, I need to just okay. that. Okay, so if you know how a snowflake, uh, a snowflake um, fluorite occurs, let me know. Because <laughs> I'm interested in on how that kind of comes through. Because I'm like, is that a real one? Oh, yeah, or is right. that a laboratory made one? And somebody screwed up and said, hey, that looks like a snowflake. That's cute. Let's keep these. Yeah. I love them. And you there's know, so many lab made stones. I mean, bismuth, like, there's bismuth. There's opalite is still lab made to a point. Uh huh. So it was auras. The aura quartzes are because they have gold and silver in them. Um, you can have a lab made citrine, a lab made quartz, a lab made turquoise, mm -hmm. lab made anything. All they're doing is they're taking the minerals of it and then creating some kind of pressure to it. And then the but biggest tea tree is like amber. You know, amber gets tea tree like. Yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, tea tree. No, it's not. I mean, it's still real, but it's, it's you know, it's it's been messed with a little and finagled with. You know, bismuth is kind of cool. I, you know, I, I, I think it's a really kind of pretty stone, but it's really brittle and breaks. But I'm um, like, to me, um, there was nothing that was more like, <sighs> than when you see an ad or you see it listed and it says it's a natural made stone. And the stone, you accidentally drop your tower. Yeah, I know you've done it because I've done it. And your tower breaks and you're looking at it and you're like, um, I think this is something that came out of a craft kit at Hobby Lobby. That's one thing that you have to be really careful with, especially with lapis, because they will paint a lapis in a heartbeat, like a deep, it's still a pretty lapis underneath, but they'll paint it like a deep blue. You drop that sucker and some good little nail polish remover, all that blue will fade right off. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a real deep blue, mm -hmm. especially with it fading off right now. It's like, goodness. Okay, so what, what's up with these? Because we were talking about what are some of our favorite stones are, and he's got, those are called what? Angel Aura Rose Quartz. Angel Aura Rose Quartz. So really? they're kind of real light pink. And what about these? Now, these are lab, you know, they're more lab, too. I mean, they're still natural rose quartz underneath, but they have more, like, infusions of, like, gold and silver and platinum in them. Okay. That's what kind of gives it that shine over, like, I'm rose like, quartz. Oh, no. <laughs> now I'm just messing with them on that. And then the opalites. Why are these, some of these, your favorite stones? What is it about those stones that you like? I just love high vibration, high vibration stones. You know me, high vibes. High vibes, true. <laughs> I'm like, I like those low vibing stones. No, I'm just joking. I don't like low vibing stones at all. They make me feel really creepy. That's why um, you don't like uh, what you like stones. Who? Uh, oh, what is it? The really, really heavy ones. They're the heavy metal ones. They're just. I lost my train of thought. I don't remember. A heavy medi metal stone. It's a rock stone, you know? A rock stone. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Okay, and then those are opalites. Op opalites. So what's cool about an opalite? It's pretty. This is. I love just the look of opalite. It just makes. Have you ever used them? Like I have crystal healing, not as much or on, on yourself, or for others. I or? haven't bought it with my opalites yet. No, I'm you still haven't. newer to it, but I, it's catching my eye. So I know there's something I need to learn from it. Because every stone I pick up, and I'm like, ooh, this draws me in. Yes, my mind is going, ooh, it's pretty, but, you know, deeper down, there's always that something. Your mind wouldn't, I believe our minds are set to trigger when we need something from that stone. Oh, I agree. And, and you know, and it's, to me, to me, it's it's too different. You either really love it or you really hate it, where you're like, yeah, don't give me that stone. That, the same thing with essential oils. You either really love it and connect to it and connect to it or you really hate it and if you really hate it you really need it you know what so, I've noticed like over the years of working with them like you can tell though because like I just put up to my heart chakra I'm like I put it there and you can feel like if it's not me you're like mm -mm. you can feel it kind of just no, not yours mine I either feel something or I don't I feel yeah. like I feel it in my heart like I feel yeah. it like deep in my heart like I can feel I guess it I feel it kind of like overall throughout your body because I've got, I've got a, you know, I have what I call, like, standards or my, my good old standbys. You know, like, I love a carnelian. You know, carnelian is great for anything in the, in the earth center. Mm -hmm. Or what, you know, you guys would refer to as your, shot, your uh, root, root sacral and solar plexus. 
I'm like, oh man, you can use a carnelian on any one of those. And somebody might go, but it's red. And I go, sometimes, sometimes it's more orange. Sometimes it's got a little yellow to or it. Or a little green to it. Or a little green to it. I was like, but um, I really love carnelians because they're really versatile. Mm -hmm. You can use them for a thousand different things. But um, there's two set, there's two combos that I like totally love in stones. And I'll talk about this one first. Um, white in the right and black in the left. Um, it's your white selenite, and I've got a big old tower here, and I think they're kind of cool. And then I have um, a big um, black tourmaline. Um, what's her name? M Maki? Or Maki's. Maki's here in Oklahoma City is where I got this piece from. And it's a black tourmaline. I love it, but when you put the white in the right, and the black and the left, especially if you have a lot of anxiety, angst, anger, um, frustration, you're going to start tripping out, you know what I mean? You can take those and put them in your hands and just sit there and hold. I don't know if it's the weight of it, but truly I, I really believe that it's the, releases. The, the releasing and the filtering. So this is like opening up that light and allowing vibration and frequency to come through and then this is filtering all of that junk so that as that's running through your body you know and then going out through the left you've got this balance and then you know 15 minutes later you're like oh I, feel like, better. I was you know was I tripping I love the ones that don't hold on any negative energy. It's like, doo, 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 they just let it go. Oh, they just let it go. Well, that's, you know, on your selenites and your tourmalines. And your um, kyanites, too. And your kyanites, they don't hold on to anything. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, here, you're clean. <laughs> oh, here, you're clean. Next. Oh, you know. And I just, I, exactly. Power wash. Like, like power wash. <laughs> and I, so I really enjoy utilizing those and you stones. Can, the selenite, especially, you can cleanse other stones. If you have like a block, you can set the stones on it, and it helps to vibrate to clean the stones off themselves. Yeah, I have, where is my, oh, it's over here by my foot. I have a big golden selenite that I put underneath the bed. Oh, wow. So now. That's what that vibration. Yeah. And, and my reasoning is, is A, I need you to calm down pretty quickly uh, coming off of I-240 or I-35. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, like, we got an hour. Um, you know, so. Rush hour traffic. Yeah, exactly. So I have that golden selenite underneath the bed uh, so that it's constantly, whatever you're releasing, it's being filtered and cleansed and out it's out the door it's gone it's you know it's new so whatever when you're on the table or on the chair and you're getting a an energy or vibrational healing session whether we're doing a shamanic raindrop reiki chakra balancing whatever that whatever is negative coming off of that is being cleared and i you know and i'm like it's really all about me i won't lie i like to have something that's clearing all the time so I'm not picking up Someone your else. residual or her residual or anybody else's residual. And then every once in a while, you know, hey, I got to calm my own little self down and I'll put my foot right on top of that stone. Because there's a couple of times I've been in session with somebody either doing, usually I'll feel it like in a, um, a Reiki or one of the soul sessions that you know we're working through something and I will I don't identify with that feeling but I recognize that vibration and I'm like oh I know you <laughs> I recognize you and then I'm like all of a sudden I start and I'm like let me throw my foot up on that stone so I'll throw my foot up on the stone and use it to balance myself while I'm working on other people Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't want, you know, because it's kind of like, yeah, it's great to get a little insight about what's going on with somebody, but I don't always want to know. You don't want to connect into the much. whole caboodle. You know, some things are better left unknown. Right? Especially if the client doesn't bring it up. You're like, I don't want it now. I'm going to just. Yeah. Not, yeah. Especially when they don't bring it up and it comes up and it's like, really? Mm -hmm. um, I had somebody that was from Vietnam. And um, had been, I mean, they were here, American now. 
I just dropped my dirt coin. But uh, they were from Vietnam, and they had lived during the Vietnam War in Vietnam. So there were some things that they were seeing. And while I was, like, working on them, I was not prepared because I was not even thinking about that particular session being, like, an energy healing session. I think it was, like, um, Aroma Touch or something back when I used to run it on the Groupons and things. Mm. And um, so, I'm, you know, and the guy wasn't coming in for an energy healing. He wanted a massage. So... Um, I'm like getting visions of Vietnam and some stuff in the jungle and literally I got sick to my stomach and I had to walk out of the room. Oh wow. And get sick and then you know and I'm like somebody else is out there and I'm like girl go in there and go finish that up for me. He's going to kill me. You know. And uh, and at that point I was like you know what it doesn't make a difference what kind of session I'm doing. Um, all of them are now vibrational healing. So because I'm you gonna, connect in, yeah. I, you're connecting in. I was like, I, I'm, I'm like always going to cover myself with that. Now, I love this stone. I actually got from over at Dragon's Cove, and this is called a sunstone, and it's like one of those little palm stones. It fits nicely in your palm. Uh, and then this is a raw turquoise so this is one that they mined and it hasn't been tumbled so if you're ever making like elixirs with a turquoise it always goes in a jar within the jar because it'll start breaking down or degradating uh -huh. degradation and it'll fall apart and you can't use it for you know anything and you really probably don't want to drink some chunks of turquoise, no. of turquoise in there but, well, when you put a sunstone, now a sunstone is an orange stone, so it goes on the sacral, right? <laughs> um, and then the turquoise can be used for a lot of different things. Um, but when you put, and it's usually like an abundance, prosperity, and fertility as in things growing, um, like a business, whatever. But when you put a turquoise with a sunstone, this becomes a fertility, as in baby making. Oh goodness! Combination. Your sunstone's pregnant. Yeah, your sunstone gets pregnant, right? <laughs> so um, I love. So when people are there, so when you're asking, what stones do you really love? And I'm like, if I was on a desert island, every I would have a quartz because remember, a quartz can be anything. But if I was on a desert island and I could only take five stones with me, we know the quartz is number one. <laughs> um, number two, number three, or number two, number three, whatever way you want to say it, I don't care. And then here would be my four and five. Because if I'm on a desert island and I put these together, maybe I'll get pregnant, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be by myself. The I'll repopulate that island. I was like, Mary Ann needed one of these on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Ginger, too. This is how it was too old. Who's not going to be the midwife? Yeah, there's the professor. He just catches the babies, you know. He's the most scientific. <sighs> Maybe he read about it in a book. I don't know, you know. Don't trust Gilligan or the skipper. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. I'm done. He says he's done. Cut. I'm done. I'm done. Cut. But, you know, no, no, we're not quite. we got a couple of minutes no, to go. But we have an open house tomorrow, Woo. and we would love for you uh, to come visit us, see us. You don't have to shop if you don't. I mean, you can shop or window shop. You will not hurt my feelings if you don't buy anything, but come meet us tomorrow. I'd love for you to buy something because he's got a lot of really cool stones. We have um uh, we have all of our little hippie bracelets and chakra bra bracelets are all on sale tomorrow. Um, with tons of necklaces, the remedies are on sale. They're they're five dollars a piece, or five for twenty. So come visit us. We prefer cash with all the discounts, but yeah, we will um, accept a card. Um, I I will say it has to be twenty. It has to be twenty five bucks or more for me to take a card on it. Um, and then, um, what do you got? Yours is, you've got a... I can do card, I can do cash, I can do cash app. Okay, I can do cash app Venmo. Um, and then you have, all your crystals are on sale. 
Yes. Um, the, if you spend 50 you get 10 off. So if you spend 50 bucks, you get $10 back. Or a chance if you do the 100 you can get the... Um, do they get do they get any money off on the hundred or is still, it it's still yeah it's still ten for every fifty so you get twenty ten, and the entry and, and an entry into and I thought that was the coolest thing into a Reiki session with me which is really cool and um, and if you buy a set of stones his like a set of chakra stones from Matthew uh, and you come in for Reiki with me um, I will attune the stones for you where those stones are attuned to your vibration. So that you take the stone, throw it in your pocket, throw it down the shirt with the girls, whatever way you need to do it. But you get your vibration going with your stones. Um, let me just make sure my son didn't text me. Um, yes, I'm going to tell him. Oh, I can do it. Um, oh, I can get an Uber. Uh, he wrote, gonna Uber. I guess my son decided he didn't want to wait for me uh, <laughs> to pick him up at the airport. Okay. Cool. Oh, so he's going to Uber so I don't have to leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to leave in a little bit. But um, I have a question. Okay. I want you to look at that stone. Uh -huh. and... Okay. I don't have a question. Yeah, I do. Talk to them. What? Talk. Say hello. Hi. How y'all doing? Tell them something cool. Oh, Shungai, for all y'all with your cell phones, to everybody who's all, you know, 5G can harm, put a Shungai on the back of it. Or anything. It, just, it does block that EMF energy and helps to keep you in alignment without that disruptive gookity gook on you. What stone is she getting? I don't know what it's called, but your stones keep making me think about. Oh! thinking about it so I was like I don't know if you can see this but it looks like almost like a white cow quartz or calcite with copper yeah, with in it I'm supposed to go. but I don't know what it is that these two stones make me feel like they're related so here hold them because he's a lot more so he's holding the stones and that's a lot that's what I do a lot is I'll pick up a stone and I'll it does have a flow to it feel but... what it feels like now if you're handling a stone quite a bit it's going to get warm and that's normal um, but one way that you can tell if a stone is a real stone is that all right so I've got like my little bowl here and some people would go oh my god I can't believe she did that with all of her stones they're all like jumbled up yeah they're all jumbled up they don't complain too much but you take the stone and you put it to your cheek because our hands tend to be hot and a real stone will be cold when you put it to your cheek hmm. if it's not cold so like you pick it up off the counter and you go like this and you put it to your face and it's not cold it's not real it's laboratory made and and I'm not Referring to like bismuth, I'm referring to like they sell you, they, they have a, a stone out and it says Please. that it's a carnelian and you go, is that, is that man-made or is that like, did you dig it up in the ground? And they're like, oh, we dug it up in the ground and you know, nobody's touched it. You pick that sucker up and you put it up to your face and you feel it and you notice that it's cold, it's real. It's warm. It's lab made. It's lab made, man made, lab made, whatever you know. Because some stones are lab made. Mm -hmm. You know, like those little oh, what are they called? Titaniums. Uh, the titan. Really? Yeah, the titaniums oh. have like because it's got to have the stuff melted down. I mean, they don't. There's nothing unnatural in it. It's just stones that are kind of melted down to become one with other stones. All the stones I got from your place. No, all my stuff's real. I know, because I'm like it's cold. But, um, uh, you know, so I, I'm like, I really, I'm like, dang it, I wish I had the, I don't know. I'm like, I don't have any man-made stones anymore. I got rid of all my man-made stones. But I do have a cool story about a, sh about a um, Shiva Lingam. Okay. If you'll reach back over there, there's a Shiva Lingam. Okay. It didn't happen to me. It happened to Barbara. 
and I had ordered some Shiva lingams, and I thought they were kind of cool. And so I, I don't know if she bought one or I gave her one, but somehow she had a Shiva lingam um, that she got from here. And you know, sometimes we put them in our pockets because these are about creating something from nothing. There are also some sex stones, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I guess you're creating sex from nothing. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, she takes her Shiva Lingam and she puts it on her nightstand. And it's probably small. It's, you know, probably about like this size. You know, it's not a big one like this, you know, or a bigger one like this. It's a smaller one. That's a, like, oh, I know. Those are so cool. And she turns out the lights and she's laying there trying to fall asleep and she can't fall asleep and she hears this on her nightstand. You know, she's got two cats. Maybe it's her cats. No, her cats are in the bed. So she turns on the light and looks and her Shiva Lingam had a baby. And there were two Shiva Lingams sitting on her nightstand. Oh, wow. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, do I have any of the Shiva Lingams left? You know, I'm like, I'm going to take that sucker home and see if it gives birth on my nightstand. Um, I, I don't think I had any left, so I didn't do that. And this one's never given birth, so I'm like, hey, I don't know. But that was the weirdest. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, that was strange. Well, that's like this morning when that stone rolled in my hand. Like, it literally, like, I'm my hand slipped underneath the seat. Also, I'm like, do, 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 do. like, what oh. were you? Were you looking for something underneath? No, the I just put my hand underneath the seat because I saw some paper underneath there. I was like trying to shoot. Also, I put hit the paper and I'm like, wait, that's something. And I was like, just roll. I wonder, was did you pull the paper out? No. Was there? Go out there and go get that paper. See if somebody left you a note. Sure, good point. Because I'm like, hey, was it a note? And that rock was holding down the note that was underneath the scar seat, or was it a note about that stone? That was, that was underneath his, oh, hey, this is a present from you, for you, love the universe. <laughs> that would be so cool. I would love that. It was my favorite garden quartz, too. No, 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 I'm over here going, would you please do that with a diamond ring, size 8? I could use a size 8 diamond ring over here, universe. I'll be your bride. You know? Wouldn't that be cool when I come out with this, like, big old stone? <laughs> <laughs> What is that? It's black pearl. What is that? The universe just gave me a huge diamond, you know. How many carrots is that? Ten. I don't know, you know. But uh, to me, it would be just something just very cool to have. Oh, it's just a good story. I love a good story. Yeah. I got the crazy story, you know. Like, how did they get that ring? This is how it happened. One day, just walking up and and there it was. You know, like some people find hundred dollar bills, some people find really cool stones. Oh yeah, I believe yeah. it. Yeah, there's a um, somebody I can't remember, the crystal collector I think is his name, something like that, on um, YouTube, and he's got a lot of videos that he does out in Arkansas, I like think. out by Mount Ida, and I'm like, I'm getting an itch to go to Mount Ida again. I want to go to Quartz Mountain. I loved it. You know, I heard we. Has anybody been to Quartz Mountain lately? So, like in the last six months, because at one point I heard that you weren't allowed to dig. I think it was like around COVID time, wasn't it? Like, gosh, it know. was like before COVID. They weren't allowing digging. Let me go look that up real quick. But you know, so here in Oklahoma, where are your favorite places to go and dig? I like going to dig and jet, but to be honest. Um, after a couple of times of digging in, jet, you know, in Jet, Oklahoma, and it's hourglass selenite, um, you don't get really, really excited, or at least I don't get really excited. Like, hey, do you want to go to Jet? And I'm like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever. It's a lot of nowhere, you know, a lot of nothing to get to this place. But I will say, Brian Baker, and he's a friend of mine. He's the guy that. Um, mines the selenite um and he's like the pumpkin man out there in woodward area um he one year we met over at um in jet 
Uh-huh. And, you know, at the salt plains to go, you know, digging for this hour solenite. And I'm telling you, those guys had it set up like an archaeological site. They were doing it like really professional. Most of us were just like taking a shovel and digging. And these guys were finding blades that I'm telling you were at least six to eight inches long and a good inch thick. They were unbelievable pieces that I had never seen before with our glass selenite. And I'm like, so I know those suckers are out there. I'm like, I'm just too lazy to set up an archaeological dig? An archaeological dig. I mean, there's a reason why I switched from archaeology museum training to nursing. I mean, it was also the money, too. I don't know why. You know, so I'm like, yeah. And people go, you studied that in college? And I'm like, yes. I went to UCO and OU. And my big thing was to be a uh, anthropologist, archaeologist, and then be able to, you know, incorporate it into the museums and stuff. And, yeah, you know, that was back when I was, you know, young. Burr. And then um, I got a <laughs> di- the, You know, and then my um, first husband decided he wanted a divorce. And I started looking, and I was like, archaeology and anthropology just don't pay. And, um, you know, and neither does working in the museums. Not, you know, you have to really have a Ph.D., to make some good money. I was like, there was no way in the world I'd be able to raise my kids, mm-hmm. you know, on a minimum wage or, a, you know, whatever. So um, I switched to nursing. And, you know, after a couple of years, I switched to nursing, and boom, that's what I did. You know, so I ended up becoming a nurse. But my love is still finding things. It's so cool, you know. <laughs> it's like you dig and you find something, and your whole perspective changes go go for go 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 dig for some gold oh yeah you know uh, here's some here's an interesting thing i was reading in one of the archaeology posts and it was they you know they've had like a lot of droughts everywhere Mm -hmm. all over the world so there's a lot of these important rivers that are like um dry and so all these different shrines and artifacts and buildings and stuff were all popping up, dead bodies. You know, that's over in Vegas. Yeah, we knew about that, right? At Lake Mead. And anyway, um, there was one of, uh, they found this area, and I want to say it was in England. And in this area, they found a, like a 7th and 8th century tombs. And they were of women, and the way that the tombs and the the burial grounds were set up, that they were Christian, because they had the crosses and et cetera on there, but they were probably very important, influential Christian females, booyah, um, that were working in that, that were very, very well known. And it was like, there was money you know, put into their burial. It wasn't like, yeah, they had a lot of influence through there. So I'm like, how are people going to really feel knowing that we had important, influential women, Mm -hmm. females, or just so-and-so's wife, that weren't so-and-so's wife that had played a major role in the, in the expansion of Christianity in the seventh and eighth century. You know, and then you get all of these different editions of the Bible, and I really believe that um, every edition that they create, they make women less and less and less than what they were, you know, um, in the 7th century, in the 5th century, in the 3rd century. So I'm like, you know, there's a lot of fallacy in, in some of the contemporary or modern day Christianity that people are going to say is new age or witchy or whatever when it was never considered that in that time you know that breastplate was very important in your uh, temple priests you know that were Jews Mm -hmm. that that was important 
So crystals and stones were very important in the development of society, of our spirituality, of our health. Think of how many medications are developed from a stone. Mm -hmm. And that, that ties into also like cell therapy. It, it ties into that. Yeah. Because of the vibration and the sound of the crystal. Well, it, you know, um, I've been studying like early day Aramaic practices and et cetera for a while. And it's very interesting because they associate each sound or syllable has its own meaning, but they also associate it with the frequency or a vibration. So when you were praying over somebody that you prayed that vowel or that sound with a specific sound, you know, so, uh, you know, like may, you know, oh. you would have a may or whatever that sound is, you would have a particular vibration that was associated with that. And that was what people believed was getting your body is out of frequency or out of vibration so someone would come and pray over you and sing those sounds you know what i love speaking about that like i love it over when you, you when you put like water in a singing bowl mm -hmm. after you buy, uh, well when ooh. you put the water in the singing bowl and you're watching it you see what vibration looks like mm -hmm. and i think that when people start to notice vibration what does vibration look like? What does it feel like? You start seeing things in a different perspective. Um, when I was a nurse, I wasn't really, uh, I was smart, okay? I'm, I wasn't dumb. You can't be dumb and be a nurse. You have a lot of You know, nurses. I was an ICU nurse, so you can't be dumb and be an ICU you nurse. You have to be quick on your feet. <laughs> you got to be quick on your feet, have good common sense, and be able to know when to call something, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, my thing was is that you know they're like we'll talk to the patient my patient has a tube, you know a tube in his mouth that you know he can't talk to me you know i've got him gorked out on a amnesiac so he's not feeling anything or remembering this and i had to really i, I just started doing reiki at work and it was more about me and less about my patient but i'm like let me see what's going you know i want to feel their vibration i want to see their vibration show me what I need to know about this patient so I can do my best work for them. I want to keep them alive. I did not like doing codes, and I did not like it when a patient died because I did not like the phone calls. Because you call the organ donation people, and I'll tell you what, you're healthy and 30, they want everything. You're 90 and they want to give everything away, they don't even want that. No. Oh, wow. No. You might as well give it to OU and let them do cadaver science with your body if you want to donate organs and stuff. I know that sounds kind of harsh in the way that it comes across, but it's really pretty true. Yeah, because they're going to want organs that can be viable. They, they want something from somebody young, you know, and quasi-healthy. Oh, you were in an accident? Too bad. And I was like, I remember this one patient. And he was a teenager, and I, I don't know why they didn't transfer him to children's, but we had this kid, and he had been in a skateboarding accident and hit his head, so he had a lot of swelling on the brain. And, you know, and so everybody, you know, doctors and all of them are all, like, wanting to go and take this kid off the ventilator and let him transition. And the parents, every day, were just like, one more day, one more day, one more day. And it was the day before the last day type thing. So it was like they talked to him on t Wednesday morning and they go, okay, just one more day, doctor. And he's just like, oh, whatever, okay. Thursday we're pulling the plug, no questions, whatever. Um, it wasn't quite that kind of conversation. That's we're just my version. The version. You know, we're giving you the mayor's version. Uh, but essentially that Wednesday afternoon that kid woke up. That's what it was with me and my mom. Like, they had told mom to donate all my organs, and then I woke up, and they're like, oh. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, for, well, I mean, I was four, so I mean, that's, that's definitely, they're going to get some good organs there. <laughs> I knew somebody that needed that heart. George but Soros like, needed that heart, no. But, um, yeah, I'm like, no. The kidneys. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I, I'm like, 
I believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. I believe in sound therapy. I believe in touch therapy. I believe in crystals and stones. I believe in essential oils. I also believe in ICU medication. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's a, you know, I believe in allopathic to a point. Um, but I believe that we can also do a lot of the same things with our crystals and stones and our essential oils and our herbs and our meditating and our peace and our harmony that I think that a lot of prescriptive medications just won't be able to handle. Well, and, you know, it's such a subtle energy, like, because if you, like, keep ignoring that energy that's out of balance, it's going to physically produce. Whereas if you cut it off at the pass and you're already dealing with it on an energetic level, mm -hmm. it never manifests because we manifest our own reality. So it never has a chance to manifest because the energy's already been dealt with on the manifest, on the it was like, level. ooh, yucky day, you know, and you're not carrying that harbor, you know, harboring that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'll, I'll tell people, you know, like somebody will say, um, oh, my dad has cancer and he's having chemo and radiation. And I'm like, what's he doing for his energy? Oh, well, he does energy drinks. That's not what I'm talking about. What's he doing for his vibration? And they'll let, I'm like, what do you mean? And I go, like, what's he doing for his vibration? Did you have to keep that strong or? You know, and I'm like, well, here's the deal. Is your vibration is the story of your body. And let's say you get the C word, okay? Uh, and we'll just say liver cancer because anger and liver, right? And they get liver cancer and they do all of the doctor's protocols and they go into remission. And then six months or a year, two years later, their liver cancer comes back with a vengeance. And they're like, why, you know, I, I did the best medication, it was the best protocol. And I'm like, did you work on the emotion that, caused the that, that was behind that cancer? What do you mean by that? Did you work on the emotion? So if they had liver cancer, all you know, I usually will talk about anger. You know, did you take care of the shish that was making you angry, mm -hmm. or that you felt anger with? And they'll look at you like, huh? how did you know I was angry? Because you manifested a dis-ease in your freaking liver. Because you weren't listening to the energy, so your body's like, okay, fine, I'm going to show you what you're not paying attention to. What you're not paying attention to. You're not paying attention to your anger. You didn't work with that anger. Well, if every time you were angry, you picked up your selenite and your tourmaline, and you went and sat down and meditated or thought or prayed or cleared your mind, you're eventually going to get that message of what you're angry about. And then you confront it and work with it and heal it and let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like people will say, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on your fluoride, and they'll say, like, man, I'm so confused. I need some clarity. I really need to narrow down that list of a 1,000 down to three. And I'm like, play with your fluoride. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Fluoride connects you in, whether with an alien or you're connecting source, in with source, you know, creator, big G, whatever you want to call Shim, I don't care. Um, but you're in there and you're connecting with that. And it does just this, you know, whether it's a placebo effect, I don't give a hoo <laughs> or the fact that I'm holding this stone in my hand, and I know that this stone is, stone is symbolic for clarity and connection with things greater than me, I'm going to take that time. What's the difference in that stone in knowing that it means clarity for me or insight then when somebody holds a rosary and and we know that the rosary is a prayer that we do to connect in with the vibration of the virgin mary so that she shows us and works with us towards you know G, you know big j so when you look at things to that effect, what's the difference between a stone and a rosary? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between, you know, you know, people are going to go, she's being sacrilegious. And I go, it's symbolic. Just like the crucifix is symbolic. And people, well, what's the difference between a cross and a crucifix? Well, a crucifix has Jesus on it, and he's hanging on that cross, and he doesn't look happy. 
you know, not at all. Um, it's supposed to remind us of his sacrifice or the misery and the torment and the whatever that he went through in order for his people where, you know, um, you know, what is this stone symbolic for? This stone is symbolic for Releasing. cleansing light and bringing light in so I can get myself balanced. And this stone is symbolic for what? For filtering out all of the negative garbage <laughs> and allowing it to be nulled. <coughs> so, you know, it's like you look at the animals, like we put way too much energy into discounting something. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, and most of the time when people talk about crystals and stones, I always ask them, have you ever played with them? Mm -hmm. Give it a chance. Why? Give it a chance. I love it. You have, a, you have a rock garden at your house? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, those are all jaspers. Jaspers are grounding. Why don't you ask yourself why you put grounding stones in the front of your house? Well, because I wanted to bring peace and calm. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see what I mean? So it's just like, stop saying that these things are all new age because they're not. Honey, they've been around longer than you have. Way longer. Way longer. And, you know, they were talking about it in how many different spiritual books or spiritual paths? I mean, goodness. Find me a spiritual path that doesn't, doesn't talk about crystals and stones or being salt of the earth. That's a mineral. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're referring to us as being salt of the earth, being something that brings balance and harmony. I was like, guys, there's so many beautiful things out there that we need to stop labeling something that's benign, because this rock is benign. It's your intention behind it mm -hmm. that makes it beautiful or not. Well, it's the same with energy. Energy is just energy. It's energy just there. Energy is energy. You put your intention behind it. You can twist it and do whatever you but As with the same hand, ooh, my battery's running low. With the same hand that I hit with, it's also the same hand that I can hug with. Exactly. What you're doing. You know, it's, it's whatever your intention is on that. Okay, well, we've, um, oh, we're at what? An hour? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close it up for the day because I'm actually kind of thirsty. Me too. I need to go get me something to drink. And um, I'm going to go check in on my son. He took an Uber. <laughs> Come see us tomorrow. Come see us tomorrow, 11 to 4. Our address is 8005 South I-35 Service Road. We're in Suite 107. Park on the west side of the building. That's the back by the carport. And I'll have a door open just for you. At 11 to 4, we'd love to see you. Um, we've got some hot teas, ciders, coffees, um, probably not water. I'll just give you a cup. we got a really good water machine. <laughs> and then, so um, uh, and hopefully I'll have some cool little snacky wackies because I know I'll need one. <laughs> so peace, love, and harmony. And thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Woo. Matt, anything in closing, bro? <laughs> Peace. We love you.